Welcome back to Crypto News Alerts. In today's show, I'll be breaking down a new model which suggests the Bitcoin price to $100,000 by 2021 and the BTC price to $1 million by 2028. In today's show, we'll also be discussing the likelihood of another alt season because according to this hedge fund manager, he says there will be no alt season until Bitcoin breaks its all-time high of $20,000. And of course, we'll be taking a look at the Bitcoin price action and where we're likely to go from here. All this and more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every day. So be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to receive notifications of the latest crypto news. All right, welcome to today's show. We'll start by kicking it off with this new model, which predicts the Bitcoin price moving to 100,000 by 2021. And it's called Bitcoin's Natural Long-Term Power Law Corridor of Growth by H.C. Berger. All right, so let's take a closer look at this graph. You can see Bitcoin spends half the time in each of of two bands and you can see this model predicts all the way out to 2041. This model allows us to make broad predictions concerning the long-term future price of Bitcoin. An example, the price will reach 100,000 per Bitcoin no earlier than 2021 and no later than 2028. After 2028, the price will never drop below $100,000. Also, the price will reach $1 million per Bitcoin no earlier than 2028 and no later than 3037. After 3037, the price will never drop below $1 million. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Oh. Furthermore, we'll see that the price corridor can be divided into two bands, one which lies at the lower end of the price predictions and is rather thin, and the other one being much larger and lying at the higher end predictions. Bitcoin price spends an equal amount of time in both bands. This implies that large bubbles and busts are likely to continue to exist. The above predictions might seem very broad, but they are sufficiently precise to disagree with the predictions of some other people. This price model should also help determine good points to enter or leave the market. I am quite confident that in the long term, the price will indeed evolve approximately as stated in this article. In fact, I think it's more likely for these predictions to be too low rather than too high. I believe that Bitcoin has more potential upside than downside to large exogenous shocks, but this article will not try to make any predictions regarding large exogenous shocks. Instead, we will assume that things continue as usual. All right, now let's take a look at different ways of looking at the price. The most interesting and amazing aspect of the price of Bitcoin is that it went through many orders of magnitude within a few years. The first instance of publicly listed price I could find was five cents per Bitcoin on Mt. Gox exchange on the 17th of July, 2010. But prior to that date, many Bitcoins changed hands at a much lower price, such as May 22nd, 2010, when Laszlo paid 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas, the infamous pizza story. And naturally, if we take a look at Bitcoin's value today, which is over $10,600, he ended up paying millions times more than what that item was actually worth but it is what it is. Going through so many orders of magnitude is unusual for a financial instrument, and indeed looking at the plot of the price of Bitcoin over time might be somewhat confusing if the price is represented in a linear scale. The below chart of the price of Bitcoin going from the 17th of July, 2010 to approximately the time of this writing, similar plots can be found at any website which lists the price of Bitcoin. So let's take a look. As you can see, at the end of 2017 was Bitcoin's peak at roughly $20,000. Any price swings close to the present are so large in magnitude compared to the price in the past. The past prices seem meaningless. However, to make sense of a long-term price trend, all past prices should have some importance. The reason for the above effect is that using a linear scale is inconvenient for anything that goes through so many orders of magnitude. Using a logarithmic rather than a linear scale is more useful. A logarithmic scale gives equal spacing from example 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 as from 1,000 to 10,000 seen in this way the bigger picture of the price evolution of Bitcoin becomes more visible so here's an example of this specific type of graph with the Bitcoin price over time in comparison to what I just shared with you here 
what becomes apparent is that the rate of growth of the Bitcoin price seems to be slowing. The price went from 0.1 to $1, a factor of 10 in only a few months. Subsequent gains of a factor of 10 came slower. In the above plot, the price has been scaled logarithmically, but not the time x-axis. Let's see what happens when the x-axis is also scaled logarithmically in a so-called log-log plot as you can see right here in this graph. Now the price curve looks remarkably linear. Linear regression, since this data looks so linear, let's try to use linear regression on it. This idea in itself is now an example I found the post on Reddit which did exactly this. And you can actually see with the line going right through the graph. The green line is a result of linear regression. Linear regression gives us the following power law to predict the price of Bitcoin on a given day. Visually, this fit works very well. It works very well all the way back to the first prices that were listed by exchanges. And interestingly, the post on Reddit was written about a year ago and the results are still remarkably similar. We can also try to perform a linear regression on only the three tops achieved in 2011, 2013, and 2017. Interestingly, this fits very well. All three data points are remarkably close to the line as you can see right here in this graph. I went ahead and included a link to this article resource in the description right below this video. Be sure to check it out because it's very detailed and very valuable. You're going to see some awesome model predictions along with graphs and you're also going to be able to see the different interpretations and price predictions of where Bitcoin goes from here. Also in the description below this video, I included a link to my Crypto Alchemy private Facebook group, which currently has 17,700 members. I share helpful resources all the time. Like this morning, I posted this. And it's a graph of the midline and four years into the future of Bitcoin going up to $500,000 price prediction. This is pretty cool. Let me know your thoughts and what you think in the comments right down below. All right, now let's talk about the future of the altcoins. When's alt season two? That has been on the minds of many investors for some time now. The average retail Joe Schmo investor most likely draws some insight from the crypto sector leaders and crypto Twitter influencers who often post compelling charts and very various digital assets with a captioned explanation of why or why not a certain price action could lead to a particular outcome. To review, here's what many investors may have internalized as truth. When the Bitcoin price consolidates, you know, trading sideways, traders will take their profits and begin to play larger cap altcoins. This catalyzes similar movement across other altcoins and could spark an altcoin rally. As Bitcoin price notches new 2019 highs, larger cap altcoins from the top 10 will move in tandem and a significant drop in Bitcoin market cap dominance will put the ball in altcoins court. And with that being said, if we take a look over at coin market cap, we can see the BTC dominance is at an all time high of 71%. This is not a good sign for altcoins. Cointelegraph spoke with Cantor and Clark, a hedge fund manager and co-founder of Blockroots, to pick his brain about the general state of the market and whether altcoins will recover. And this is what they had to share. Bitcoin has had some periods of range-bound trading since topping out at 13,800. In your opinion, why haven't we seen traders take advantage of this consolidation to jump into altcoins? Also, what exactly is alt season in your opinion? Cantering responded, alt season was essentially a bunch of new investors entering the crypto space drawn in by Bitcoin. They saw Bitcoin as being very expensive and the perception at the time was cheaper altcoins are going to be future Bitcoins in the making. Newer investors were relatively ignorant of market cap and multiplier effects. They just saw the smaller price and equated cheaper price to a better deal. And that is so true. When we saw Bitcoin like $19,000 and then you see Ripple for three bucks or you see Cardano for a few cents or stellar lumens and all these random altcoins well it's like whoa what a deal these are going to turn into bitcoin hmm in my opinion altcoins were the epitome of the bubble for 2017 and the process closely mirrored the gartner hype cycle bitcoin is essentially the chosen asset by the industry and it has become the haven of crypto when bitcoin does well there are flows that can be capitalized on but this flow cycle has begun to untether and fall apart the inverse correlation and positive correlation is no longer a conventional occurrence that investors can consistently rely on. Bitcoin price hasn't broken its all-time 
high, and the next alt season is unlikely to occur until this all-time high is broken. And I went ahead and included a link to this article below this video in the description so you can check out the entire interview with this hedge fund manager and Cointelegraph. All right, now taking a look over at the four-hour Bitcoin chart, we can see Bitcoin currently trading at about $10,593. We can check out the exponential moving averages. We have that blue support right here at roughly about the $10,500 mark. Now we did peak at about 10,800 in the past 24 hours, but we couldn't stay above that resistance and unfortunately consolidated back down to where we're currently at, which is roughly $10,600 level. We also have an exponential moving average here at about the $10,300 level. And then we have two exponential moving averages crossing, which is always interesting, the red and the green right here, at about the $10,200 level. All right, now taking a look at this graph more so from a bird's eye view, we can see the $10,000 critical support all the exponential moving averages are supporting way above that. So where does Bitcoin go from here? Well, keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor and I do not give financial advice. These are just the opinions of a YouTuber. Fair enough? Capiche? All right. So with that being said, I think we're more than likely going to continue to range and eventually have an eminent breakout and hopefully it's to the upside. I feel we have to climb above that critical $10,800 resistance and move on up past 11,000. And I feel once we do, we could climb to 12,000 or even 13,000 like that. I've seen some predictions from some of the crypto analysts and that's what many of them are predicting. But on the other side of that coin, if we drop below that critical support level of $10,000, we may revisit 8,000 or 9,000. That's always a possibility on the table, but also keep in mind, the back future launch is right around the corner. There's ETF proposals on the table, so there are a lot of bullish news. Also with the economic uncertainty, and we see hyperinflation going on in different countries around the world, they're putting limits on how much of their currency they can actually dump. So it's a pretty crazy time right now, which looks very bullish for Bitcoin. All right, and taking a quick look over at Coin360, we can see BTC is in the green up 1.52%. Ethereum is down 2.23%. Litecoin is down 2.22%. XRP, down. most of the altcoins are in the red. And this is typical when the Bitcoin dominance continues to rise. That's why you have experts like Max Kaiser, who predicts that Ethereum will go down to $90. And he predicts that the Bitcoin dominance will continue to rise. I do not see the value of the altcoins going up if the Bitcoin dominance is going up and take a look at some of the graphs, Bitcoin dominance is higher than it's ever been and it looks like it's going to continue that momentum. Take a look for yourself. Here's a chart of the Bitcoin dominance over the course of the last year. One year ago, it was 54%. And again, today it is over 71%. Now let's take a look from the last three months. You can see just 90 days ago, the Bitcoin dominance was 55%. And again, today it's over 71%. Let's take a look at the last month. Bitcoin dominance was 67%. So you can see the trajectory is for the Bitcoin price to continue to climb. I don't see this changing anytime soon. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, that concludes today's show. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to receive notifications of the latest crypto news. And oh yeah, as we take this Bitcoin rocket ship to the moon, don't forget to check out the description right below this video. I've included some incredible resources from today's show for you to tap into and check out that will help you take your crypto game to that next level. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. I'll catch you on tomorrow's episode. Deuces.